Hello everybody and welcome to another deck showcase video where I showcase five decks all built around one card. Or at least the card is the inspiration for the deck because build around means a lot of different things to different people. But this one, it's five true magic deck ideas. So these are all built around the card true magic. Um, so if you don't know what true magic is, this is a four cost, five experience. A uh, mystic asset that takes up a hand slot and a spell slot. It's an item, a relic, and a tome. That's all going to be relevant <laughs> in the future. But it uses one charge. Replenish this charge at the start of each round. You may resolve abilities on spell assets in your hand by revealing them from your hand. Treat true magic as if it were the revealed asset in, uh, to pay for its cost, spend charges, performance effect, etc., etc. So true, ma true magic is a very interesting card. And when I first started trying to get deck ideas for this together... I didn't really have... I was like, this isn't going to happen. There's no way that I am going to get more than, like, two ideas from this. But I actually have five ideas that obviously do the same thing. Where it's like you're using spell assets. But the idea behind it is different for each deck. So, like I did with Dirty Fighting previously... Uh, I'm here today with five true magic deck ideas. Some are good, some are bad, and you can kind of use them as your own inspiration and starting point going into the future. So you can look at these decks and you can change them to what, you know, works better for you, or tweaking them, or taking them and turning them into something completely different. That's kind of the whole point of this series, is to showcase decks. So why don't I write down some time codes as we get into our first deck? So, our first one is a Norman Withers support deck. So, Norman Withers' is True Magic is supporting his friends. The first time I saw uh, True Magic actually being played, it was in a patron game day where a player... Unfortunately, I don't remember the patron. I think it might have been... I'm going to go on a shot in the dark here and say Harrison. Uh, built a Luke Robinson deck, I believe that used true magic and it was really cool and it was kind of like they were a flex spot so that was my first inspiration where it's about you know using a, a one of a bunch of spells that you would rather never want to put into play so as you can see here we got true magic spoiler alert all the decks are running true magic as one ofs just because true magic is a five cost card I'd rather not, like, run multiple copies of it if I can find other ways to bring it out. It's kind of like my thought process for it. Our four spells that we're using are Clarity of Mind, Healing Words, and uh, the Scrying. So these all spend a charge to heal, horror, or damage, but also to look at the top card of the deck. And you all obviously could also just, like, play a Scrying or play one of these. It's kind of like the big thing about True Magic. But the idea is you don't want to do that, right? You want to keep them in your hand and use them when you can use them. And the nice thing about True Magic is it doesn't just have to be action abilities. It could also be Lightning Bolt abilities in the case of Scrying. We also have a Sixth Sense because you can always use True Magic. You can always use True Magic and Sixth Sense together because Sixth Sense doesn't require charges. So even if, for example, your True Magic is all empty you can still just six sense it which i think is really cool um so that's kind of like the idea here so when people need help you heal them when people don't need help you get clues whether that be through six sense or through norman withers's incredible ability scroll of secrets is also here to further give us some support and also just because it lets us you know deal with the encounter deck travis once built a norman withers deck that was all about sealing tokens and uh, stop in the encounter deck and I thought that would be really fun here as well our allies we have two copies of laboratory assistant to help us draw more cards they're also cheaper to play off the top of our deck and research librarian is a two of for redundancy as more copies of true magic crack the case draw uh, gives us resources it also supports other people deep knowledge draws cards but can also help our fellow fellow allies a one of foresight is here to just give us some more juice and then we also have three open gates because we're a support deck. And I was like, I think we should just kind of embrace this and just like go all in on the support. So that's why I went with three copies of open gate. Shortcut, 
once again to move and also help other people move. And then did I just go from one pen to another, you might be thinking? Yes, I did. And then we have two copies of Water Protection too, because they can help other people. And then we have just some skills that, you know, help Norman, but also can help other people as well. So yeah, this deck is very simple. And I think this is probably the most straightforward use of it. There's This could easily add kill spells to become a bit more flexible as opposed to like support. But I think a support Kluver is still a role that can get things done. And Norman Withers is also just has a fantabulous stat line. So you can just make things work even without trying too hard. You can just grab a lot of clues as needed. Alright, next deck we have here is... Sorry, we went back in time. We want to go forward in time. Is tricked you it's another dirty fighting deck <laughs> we're not finished yet we ain't finished yet so uh as i said in the previous episode i did six dirty fighting decks well guess what i'm back with one more but also true magic is here as well so this one takes a very similar idea right where true magic is using um mists of rella ineffable truth and blur to evade enemies without spending charges a big thing that's different with this one as you'll notice right away is that these are not one ofs so the plan is to still play them and use them right like you still want to play and use these cards um and you just kind of like want to like hold some of them back to true magic this works especially well with dexter because you know you <clears throat> You want to be swapping things out. And that's why we actually have so many things that we're going to be holding in our offhand. But also because True Magic, we don't have an easy way to fish it out with Dexter. Like, you actually probably could run Backpack in this deck pretty easily. But I instead went for um, Friends in Low Places. But this could easily be a Backpack to save yourself on some experience. And you know what? I don't even know why it isn't. <laughs> Now that I look at it for a bit second, I guess I just forgot that Backpack was a thing, or this was put into the deck when I actually had less items for some reason. But yeah, no, that could easily be a Backpack. Because they'll end up costing the same money anyway. And you look at three more, three less cards with it, you should turn those into Backpacks. <laughs> that's why, that's what I'm, I'm talking about here. Notably though, back on topic for the video, um, the Blur... Most of the Edge of the Earth spells actually don't work well with True Magic. The exception to that is Blur. If you have Blur in your hand, you're basically doing a tough, a tough to assemble, experience heavy Finn Edwards impression, which is really cool. So obviously we're using these Evade spells to attack, and we're attacking with things like Sword Cane, Colt Vest Pocket, or you heard it, Wither, baby. Wither, like Sixth Sense, doesn't take charges. Like I said, this deck could, this deck probably greatly improved, but I would run the hell out of this deck as it is, except for maybe the backpack situation I talked about earlier. <laughs> and uh, I would, you know, I would uh, have a great time. Uh, more uh, assets that we can like dispose of, Arcane Initiate, Scroll of Secrets, once you're through with it, just turn it into something else. Scroll of Prophecies as well to help us draw a bunch of cards. Holy Rosary to bump up our brain, and then just like a bunch of nice traditional cards with Deny, Easy Mark, Friends in Low Places, which should be <laughs> a backpack, cough, cough, and then Promise of Power. Man, that's so funny to me. That should just, I, like, because we have nothing else in the body slot. Who, who knows, maybe I was running fine clothes for some reason. But, like, Backpack even works, like, with Dexter. So, you know, I, I, I want to say I'm embarrassed, but I've made enough of these videos with mistakes that I don't feel embarrassed anymore. But this definitely, that definitely, Friends in Low Places, it should be a Backpack. Unless, of course, you spend the experience to also put talent on it, because then you can also grab Dirty Fighting. I could see that be a thing. You could also do, like, Spell. But as it is with my inclusion here, I don't know what past Justin was thinking, but it wasn't... I don't want I don't want to know what he was thinking. All right, let's go to our third deck. I'm loving these decks, so these are really fun to build and I think they would be pretty fun to play. We got Luke Robinson. So, I think Luke is actually a, a really good user for this kind of stuff because like Norman, he has uh, a research librarian to help him find things out. Um so, Luke's cursed, but that won't stop his true magic. This is a cursed focus deck, which I think is actually super sick um, with uh, with the true magic, right? 
because you could um put more charges on it right because it's it's like it doesn't say max one you just replenish up to one at the start of the round like if it has you won't replenish if it has a charge on it but you can like use it multiple times i'm pretty sure anyway uh true magic is a little bit wonky but as you see we're running two ofs sorry one of two spells is a one of this one is super spell light this one really requires you to assemble the pieces and a lot of that truthfully is just because um it's tight on experience right like um i only have 29 for these the decks that you build are probably going to have more so you can do more of that this is like with building with my 29 xp stipulation so i'd like to like you know add other cards as well as opposed to spending 16 of my experience on eye of chaos and armageddon's and then another five on true magic leaving me with only eight experience to add other things with so like it's not really accurate for how it's going to be, but it is kind of just like the idea behind it to a limited amount of experience. So Armageddon Eye of Chaos is one of's, uh, and then we also have like Scroll of Secrets again to help us find things, uh, Laboratory Assistant to help us draw more cards, and then Research Librarian to help us find our true magic. Went with Crystal Pendulum here because it can draw cards. Uh, this is not uh, a loop that's built around the seeker side of his pool of using his book to investigate. But we do get to use a lot of tricks here to help us really push the curse thing uh, to the moon. Um, I do think that the Armageddon and Eye of Chaos is a really fun combination um, with true magic. Because it's just... The, the tough thing about Armageddon and Eye of Chaos, Eye of Chaos sorry, is that you're... You hate running out of charges, especially when you're not finding curse symbols. But what makes it a bit easier? Well, when you are, uh, you know, basically building another version of them with your true magic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it could be it could be a fun time. Favor of the moon for us to draw curses when we want them, when we're using our Armageddon's or our Chaos, when we want to actually deal the damage to kill things. Notably, the thing, the downside with this one is that you only get one use of them a turn, unless you maybe reveal a curse token and you put another charge on it, right? Like, you have to, like, Look at it like that. This is going to be a little bit wibbly wobbly. However, we have Blasphemous Hack, a Covenant to help us and our friends get through curses. Deep Knowledge to draw cards and add curses. Rite of Equilibrium, which I actually recently played in a curse deck, which is kind of sick. It's just like, just add all the curse tokens you can and put in that many blessed tokens. Seems fun, right? Seems fun, doesn't it? Obviously, this could just be a... a uh paradoxical covenant deck like it definitely could as well um but i think it's more a curse deck right but that could also just change for how you want notably this is with taboo so they're each only cost three experience i believe so it's a lot cheaper than the 10 it looks like on this slide shortcut uh which is also just really good with luke's ability right it lets some boop bounce between a location you play it as if you're at an adjacent location then you move to a location connecting to that location so you move to with one shortcut that's pretty sick. Uh, stirring up trouble to help us get clues and put curse tokens in. Tempt fate. Voice of raw for some cur uh, some economy. And then, as you can see down there, word of command is here to be additional copies of Armageddon and AI of Chaos in our deck to grab them when we need them. Uh, notably, uh, the curse, the cost on Armageddon and Eye of Chaos is not nearly as demanding as it seems, because really in this deck, all we're playing is realistically a true magic a research librarian crystal pendulum lab assistant because you notice we only have voice of rods we don't have much economy in this deck but in theory we actually don't need to do a lot of big upfront purchases just like true magic and then like we can pay play the laboratory assistant research librarian crystal pendulum voice of raw is probably going to get there on its own and then guts and promise of power just because you know cards are good cards are good okay Next one here, we got an Agnes deck. So this one, this one's a little bit funky. Okay, this one's a little, this one's a little bit funky. Uh, as you can tell, I kind of went from like most confident to like least confident as the video is going. This one is Agnes's True Magic is saying no to spell slots. So while True Magic does take up a spell slot, which kind of ruins this a little bit. I still thought it could be fun to try to build around this 
spell empty spell slot deck. Um, but then like, you know, just having one there, but still being able to use spells when needed. And I thought Agnes could potentially be a good user for this because she can play with the meat cleaver and Pete Sylvester and then add in living ink to get like our fist boosted up really high. I thought it could be fun. So uh, I attempted this thing here. As you can see, we have the Meat Cleaver and Pete Sylvester, the Pete Cleaver, if you will. And then obviously Agnes can also deal damage with her ability, which is really nice in addition to Meat Cleaver. Uh, the spells that we're running here are Azure Flames and Shrivelings. Uh, we have a two of Shriveling. This could be something else, but we, as you notice, we don't have any like way to find our kill spells. And we don't really have like a great way to even find our true magic in this deck. So you probably would want to maybe... Like, you might be forced to play the Shriveling. I think this one is definitely the messiest on the Mulligan. And could probably benefit from a Scroll of Prophecies as well, or some other form of card draw. We do have the Eldritch Initiation, uh, which, you know, lets us draw cards. Um, I mean, like, a draw two, discard one is not a good rate. But as soon as you get a Binder's Jar that maybe gives you a few more spell slots, it can start to become a little bit spicier, right? Uh, otherwise, Azure Flame Shriveling is how we're going to be dealing our damage and our horror, sorry, our damage uh, effectively to enemies, along with the Meek Lever and the True Magic is, I think, a fun combination and kind of a weird thing to go here. Um, Binder's Jar locks enemies away, but also gives us more um, arcane slots, some more spell slots, uh, which I think is just, like, kind of fun. And then our Living Ink, it goes hard. Our living ink goes hard. Did I I think I actually this actually I think there's even more to this one. One second. I think there actually is there should be some more to this. I think that the the slide is actually wrong. The decks are down in the description. But this should be This should actually have nine experience in, I'm pretty sure. This also should have the bottom three X's. And I think I just accidentally deleted them. Yes, okay, so it's not visible here. But this should actually have Subtle Depiction, Eldridge Ink. So Subtle Depiction, you can choose not to remove a charge. Eldridge Ink to get the fist. Macabre Depiction, which allows us to put additional uh, 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 charges on it if we reveal a symbol token. And then also Vibrancy. So we're going to get an additional plus one to the chosen skills. So this is going to give us plus two brain, plus two fist, minus one book, minus one foot. So there is more than it actually appears on the card. And this is important because the plus two fist is hyper relevant for our meat cleaver. And also, I guess, our spectral raver, razor. This basically has a promise of power committed to it, which is really nice when that's in play. Forbidden Knowledge is just some economy. Uh, but it also, you know, is free horror if we ever need it. Painkillers, once again, allows us to heal damage that we might take from effects like Azure Flame or enemy attacks. Uh, Eldritch Initiation, I also said, was some of our... Um, was a good chunk of our card draw. And then we have Emergency Cash to get some money. Explosive Ward to deal damage. Notably, Explosive Ward is going to be expensive to deal big bursts of damage. So that's why our economy is a little bit like we have the Forbidden Knowledge and the emergency cash, and the take hearts, right? So we kind of want a bit of everything. Um, fight or flight, this could be something else. I just like fight or flight sometimes, and I think it could be good in this deck, especially if we're planning on fighting with a meat cleaver, right? It's just kind of like a synergy that's just asking to be experienced. Spectral Razor, Ward of Protection, take heart. Those cards are just like bangers. They're just bangers. All right. We have one last deck. And do you think... I would make a mystic video without Jim Culver. I would definitely be... I would regret it if I didn't. So Song of the Dead, not a great card. Would it be better if we used it with true magic? <laughs> would it? Would it is the question. What is the, would it is the question. Are those really level zero to six senses? Did I not uh, pay for the big ones? I didn't. Those are just the regular level zero six senses. I mean, are not uh, not bad, but not good. Those definitely should be upgraded. <laughs> I'm learning so much about the time I built these decks. You know, I, I signed off on them. I made the thing, and I was like, "Yeah, these are great." But now, current Justin is like, "Uh oh, we're in trouble." 
So yeah, Sixth Sense, Song of the Dead are here to work with True Magic. Once again, Sixth Sense doesn't take charges, and Song of the Dead sucks to play, but you can play one of them and then like keep the other one back and just True Magic it a bunch. Uh, notably, it'll feel a little bit less bad when you miss and ultimately don't deal three damage because it doesn't require... You're not going to eventually going to run out of charges with your Song of the Dead. Again, you probably aren't aiming to succeed... <laughs> All the time, but we're going to try our darndest with things like All of McBride, Dark Prophecy, Eldritch Inspiration, which can potentially get us even more Skull Tokens or double the damage of our Skull Tokens. Um, notably, this um, this deck is kind of in a weird limbo spot, where, as I was saying, you don't want to like rely on it to be your damage dealer. This one is just kind of here for the memes. You probably want the level 4 Six Senses, because then they actually get like really good. Um... And also, like, those could be, like, you could do to go to the level 0 emergency caches to put one level 4 six cents into your deck. Like, that could be a change that I would also just sign off on right now. But then otherwise, we got things like Look What I Found to get more clues. Um, Jury Rig, which is an item which you can attach to True Magic, I believe, to get uh, plus 2 to a skill test. I, like... I feel like I'm missing something, but I don't think it's that. I think, like, that totally checks out. But it feels wrong, doesn't it, to wrap your, your book of reworking reality with barbed wire and having it, like, actually be better? Like, I don't know if that actually does work, but in my head it does. Like, it all seems to check out. Uh, we also obviously have the backpack to help us find the Jewel of Areolus and the True Magics. Not many things to hit here, but that's why we, I went for the upgraded Emergency Caches. Because those are, like, better hits. So we, we have, like, six cards in our deck. This is really here to f try to find the True Magic, right? It's here to kind of dig deeper for that. And then also the Word of Command is here to help us grab our Songs of the Dead. Or, alternatively, our level four our level four six cents of those get put in which i think they probably should they probably were at one point but then i took them out for jokey stuff <laughs> like probably right i mean the jewel of areolus could easily be um like a holy rosary but the card is like really good it's really good at giving you cards and resources so like it's very nice for that effect so obviously the game plan in this deck is just a classic gym song of the dead deck where you try to draw a skull using Olive and Dark, Dark Prophecy, and then you try to double that with Eldritch Inspiration. Right? That's kind of like that's kind of like the goal of the deck. Will you ever hit that goal? I'm gonna wager no. <laughs> I've experienced it and it did not work, but I had to do at least one Jim Culver deck. Hey, where am I? There I am. Hello. So yeah, that is this video. I had a lot of fun making these decks, even though as I watch them back now, I'm like, Ooh, what were those choices? Those definitely could have been better. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed them and that maybe you got some ideas. If you have any further ideas for uh, true magic decks, let me know down in the comments. And you can also just like, uh, you know, suggest cards for me to look at this in the future. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Have a good one. And as always, a GG's.